So you're basically strategically trying to figure out what it's going to take for your schedule each and every year to give you the best possible shot to advance, have a high RPI or a low, as the case may be, and uh, reach the postseason. I don't think there's any question. When you talk to, to fans and coaches and players, what's your goal? What, do you, what is success for your team? NCAA it's, tournament. It's all around the NCAA tournament. And it, it's unfair to, to one level about how well you do in the tournament, uh, I think that's a little unfair because you can get a bad draw. You can, you know, you play a bad game or have a team that, that's playing well against you. Right. And so how successful you can be in the tournament is, is a crapshoot. But on the other hand, getting there, that's something substantial, something you can look at and say, okay, how can we get a plan to get in the NCAA tournament? And I feel like the more times you get in, the more chance you have. If you're from the Big East and you get in the NCAA tournament, you got a chance to be a Final Four team. All right, so so what you're telling me then, though, is that there might be some uh, credibility to high-profile, high-major teams who get into the tournament year in and year out to have the advantage in subsequent years based on previous years' performances? Well, I think so. Does that so. go yeah. into it? Sure. It, it goes into it how much success you have, and a lot of it goes into the scheduling. And so as we look at teams that have had success, and I've been – I've been working uh, the last couple weeks, you know, in, in my so-called free time uh, <laughs> on the RPI and on scheduling and, and looking at every game, uh, you know, taking a step back. Okay, now what, what, what is a good game to bring into the dunk? What's a good game for a road game? What about neutral games? How can this all be focused around the NCAA tournament? Okay. And having that plan in place is going to be very important. We had a scheduling meeting with our, our athletic director, Bob Driscoll, today, and and I think that, uh, you know, our administration and our coaches and everybody, uh, the thing I like about it, talking about how good our program is going to be in the future is we're not just going by the seat of our pants. We've got a plan and everything we we're doing from fundraising to ticket sales to coaching to recruiting, there's a plan. And so we know there's going to be some bumps around the road, along the road, but um, we're looking at this long term. And I think, uh, you know, our fans that, that stick with us, they're going to have some, uh, some good rewards to come. Safe to say then in terms of scheduling, you're probably looking at trying to get into some sort of a, of a preseason tournament event every year, right? No matter where it might be, something that would allow you not only to showcase the program, but to, you know, reward the kids, let the fans come out, do that kind of thing. And you're probably looking at uh, trying to play uh, a you're high major. You're going to the two-part question now. You're going to two or three parts. You better start with one. Okay, the first, I'll leave, answer, I'll leave the me, first one. Let then. me answer the first one. All right, one. that's fine. So I think, I think when you talk about the exempt tournaments, yes, we want every year to play in one uh, exempt tournament. This year we hosted a tournament. I right. thought it was uh, that was great for our young team. Right. Um, it's not something that I think you would see very often uh, out of Providence College. I think because we had so many freshmen, because we had four road games already set in the non-conference, it made sense to play those three games. However, I think you'll see tournaments, much like our, our tournament next year with Cancun, where we will host a couple games before going to a neutral site, before going to Cancun or South Padre or Maui or, or wherever it might be in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And so I think then you're getting your home court uh, advantage and trying to get a couple wins before you go out and test yourselves against the best in the okay. country. Safe to also say then that uh, you'll be looking to try to play, if not a, a home game, maybe even a road game against a high major team somewhere? Well, I think that one of the, the best things that we were able to do, uh, you know, through Bob Driscoll and his hard work was to be able to lock in Boston College. How That, that makes more sense than any game on our schedule to be able to play a, a team that we have a longtime rivalry with. I agree with that, A team that we can way. just, you know, bust down in 40 minutes. And those games really help you in the RPI because if you beat Boston College and they talk about good wins, hey, that's going to be up there. Absolutely. If you lose yeah. – they're not going to be talking about that game as a, as a bad loss. Right. They're going to be talking about that. That's a quality, you know, quote, unquote, loss. And so I think to have that on the schedule for long term uh, makes a lot of sense. Everything else is, is up for suggestion, but I think there's some really good games that we have on our schedule. We just have to make sure that, that there's certain ones that, that don't hurt us so much. Right. I know that uh, in terms of scheduling, uh, I've had a couple of fans come to me and say, you know, I know that the contract with URI is up after next year. I assume that that's something that you anticipate continuing to try to do at some point in time. Do you see any problem with renewing that series? No, I mean, I, I've, you know, I, I 
hear from people that, you know, bring up the fact that we don't want to play them or things like that. I've never said that. You know, I think, yes, URI is a great game for us. Uh, it's just going to be down, you know, when contract negotiations of, you know, quantity of games and right. the financial side that I don't, I don't get into much. But I think the games with URI, the atmosphere that you get at the dunk is, is incredible. And, and to be able to have that on your schedule is something that we want to try to continue to do. How we do it, uh, you know, that's something that we need to look at. Do you find also that, uh, and this is obviously something that Jim Beheim has lived with, uh, John Thompson Sr. also lived with it for a long time because of the strength of the league that you're in, and it's obviously gotten stronger over the years now that it's 16 teams. In past years, they would line themselves up with the quote-unquote cupcakes, uh, teams that obviously weren't as strong from low majors, teams that would come in for guarantees, what have you, because they felt like they had to have wins that was the bottom line because it was going to level off come conference time. That seems to have changed philosophically over the last few years because of this, the, the importance of having a high RPI. Do you ever see a need where that still might come into play? I mean, for instance, this year with the three games to open the season with a younger team, how do you, how do you find the right balance? Well, I think one thing is you look in the non-conference about national TV. Can you get your team, because you know, it helps with recruiting, obviously it helped uh, you know, uh, build the brand uh, of Providence College. And so we're always looking at opportunities like that, whether it's a one-year shot uh, or a multiple kind of type of contract. But on the other side of that, uh, I don't know that it's as important that you load yourself up in the non-conference. What is important is that when you look at the RPI, that you're staying away from uh, a multitude of games against teams that are in the bottom 50 of the RPI. A one or two isn't going to hurt you. But if you play last year when we got stuck uh, trying to fill in games, right. we had three, four teams that were in the bottom 50 of the RPI. That took a big hit for us. Uh, if we were able to take more middle-of-the-road teams, uh, quality teams, maybe not top 100, but in that 100 to 200 range, still be able to have success with them, our RPI number would have jumped. But uh, when you wait, and, and you're focused on other things. I've got to have somebody on my staff that's focused on scheduling and work on it every day. And yet, obviously, my assistants are going to be working on recruiting. We have to work on our player development. But you can't let one, one area of your program uh, be ignored until the end of the year or you're going to pay the consequences for All it. All right, very good. We're broadcasting live again from Water Place Restaurant in downtown Providence on One Finance Way, so we want you to come out and join us here. It's the Keno Davis Show. Make sure, fans, though, you remember to bring your whole family coming up to the dunk. The Friars take on the Yale Bulldogs this Monday night at 7 p.m., and tickets are as low as 5 dollars. So if you were wondering, how do I get out to a game? I don't know if I can afford a game. Make sure that you put this Monday night down on your schedule. It's a 7 o'clock tip-off. Tickets can be available for as low as 5 bucks. So that will be a great thing to do for even a potential stocking stuff or maybe a little early Christmas gift. And We have some stocking stuff or ideas for you as we get underway with the holidays. Coming up in the program, we're going to take a look at how the Friars rank in the Big East just a little bit. I think you'll find some of the numbers and some of these statistical places somewhat surprising. We'll also take a look at some of the other teams in the Big East and how the league overall has been faring, as we all know. A little bit of a surprise this year, Coach, really, with the strength of the Big East overall. Everybody thought last year was such a great year. Record-wise, this year is even a little bit better. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Obviously, um, I don't know that you're going to see a year in the Big East in any time in the near future or any conference that's going to have three number one seeds. But I know coming back from, those, uh, from Big East Media Day and our conference meetings, how many of the teams that finish in the bottom half think they're going to be better this year? And so it should <laughs> every be every one of them. It should be exciting for fans to be able to come out and know every game that you're not going to have, right. you know, two or three teams that are just, you know, going to be in the bottom. They're going to be challenging the top teams each and every night. So we will jump into the Big East. We'll also have some time for some questions from those of you here in the crowd at Water Place Restaurants. We'll be thinking of those questions. We'll get you up here and we'll let you talk to the coach. And we'll also have Keno's winning combination. That's coming up a little bit later in the program. It's the Keno Davis Show on Sports Radio 1037 WEEI FM. <laughs> 